Running makes you feel terrible in the moment and incredible afterwards. Johnny Davies. Johnny Davies. Running the entire London Underground, every single line, 572 kilometers. Four years ago, the idea of me running a marathon with Yomi, that's something I never thought I could do. With a smile on my face, I'm now doing it with ease. Has there ever been any other moments where you did start getting those lows? I, yeah, I had a, my cousin passed away the back end of last year. It's like, you know, how do we feel about someone so young passing away? What does that mean for your life? How the fuck is this possible? I'm trying to go therapy. I am terrible at that kind of stuff. Like, you know, just someone I don't really know having a conversation like that and asking real deep questions. I'm like, go fuck yourself. I don't tell you this. Yeah, one of the ways I can improve this attitude I have towards myself or towards people who give me or show me any love or affection, why do I feel that I don't deserve these things? What is it about me? Our champion today is an ordinary bloke facing an extraordinary challenge. His name is Johnny, and he's planning to run the entire length of the London Underground in 11 days. That's 572 kilometers, which in context is 13 marathons. He's a believer that running's massively helped his mental well-being, and when listening to him, I believe it too. So and welcome to Power of the Ordinary, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. you having me. Um, the, the point of the podcast is everything you've just been touching upon is... It's, it's, yes, you're starting to get this traction right now. You're doing, you're running, you're getting this audience. You've got an incredible challenge that's around the corner. Yes. Can you tell me a bit about the challenge? 11 days, tube stations, networks. It tell is, me about that. It is a, yes, yeah, a special one. So it's starting in 13 days time. Yeah. Um, on September the 7th. So by the time this goes out, it may already have happened. Yeah. So September the 7th, yep. you are partaking a running challenge. Run the line. So Run this the is line. running the entire London Underground, every single station, every single line, from start to finish, down yeah. every single split, the whole works. Um, when I had the idea, I didn't realize how exactly how long it was going to be. How it's long actually is it? 572 kilometers. How much is that a day? It depends on which line you're running. So <laughs> rather, rather than doing it a case of like, let's split it evenly, I thought, let's do a line a day and it varies. So there's act, the av like the average, th there's only one line that's basically works out as what the average is. And that's yeah. around 55, 56K. The rest of them are varying between sort of 20 and 30k yeah and then it's like 70 to 90k so it's a day of like goes basically mm. 70k 30k yeah 70k again 35k 80k and to give context to this how long's a marathon oh like 40 42k so a marathon's 42k yeah so realistically it's at least a marathon a day if not way more <laughs> yeah there's a, there's a few days in there where it's double marathon days um so it's like london marathon twice in a day in, in essence yeah just with less people chanting or cheering for you and a lot more tourists commuters cyclists roadworks people in the way um yeah and there's no sort of aid station on the way it's all with dog crewing ourselves and and working on out there. So. And the question that begs me to ask is, well, like, why? What What was the point that made you go, I'm going to do this challenge? It's an interesting one. I've started getting into the world of ultra running just through the steps we'll go through, go through shortly. Yeah. And um, the challenge itself came about. I I had an idea to try and do an interesting running challenge for my, for their own sake of having something to aim for like that just means that it creates disciplines in your daily yeah. life. The challenge itself is fantastic, but the real value isn't completing the challenge. The real value is becoming a person who can complete that challenge. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, that means you have to be disciplined with your training. It means you've got something to aim for. Mm -hmm. It means that you know that, you know, that you're accountable to yourself, you're accountable to your training. And I always put that sort of attitude towards most things in life. It's never the thing, the achievement itself isn't the achievement. Yeah. The achievement is becoming a person who can achieve it. Yeah. You know, it's never, you know, you, know, I, I, you can scale it to anything. Going to university isn't about receiving a bit of paper at the end of the three years. It's the journey of the three years. It's the journey of the three years. Everything and anything like that. And you know, I think we get held up in society today with regards to things on social media. You look at the achievements people have got. The achievement itself isn't really worth much. Mm. You know, okay, you you know, whether it's sport, whatever it is, okay, you win it this year. It's not yeah. it's not in achieving it, it's in becoming the person who can achieve it. Yeah. So for me, the challenge necessarily wasn't as important as I think it may seem. Obviously, it's an incredible challenge. It's in my home city of London. Mm -hmm. I'm able to bring as many people along with me as possible. People who want to come run with me and join me on it can come and join me with this. I think it's really special because yeah. a lot of other ultra running challenges, generally ultra runs are done in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Far out in inhospitable places. London is a bit more hospitable than most yeah. places ultra runs are done. At the same time, though, it's still a unique challenge in the sense of because you have to deal with the cars, the people, the streets. It, it's yeah. busy as well. Um, but... For me, it was most important the fact that it was a place that people could join me on. People okay. can be involved in it as well. 
and that was really important for me so that's why the, the whole thing yeah. you know it's being live track so people can come join me wherever they want to yeah. um but for me the idea first came about early this year i actually ran the victoria line 24 kilometers one of the one of the tube lines and i didn't i was like i wonder if people are kind of interested in this stuff and it turns out people have really like people have a it sounds weird because London's such a unique city, it's a large city, everyone's you know in, involved with getting around, whatever it is. Yeah. It's almost like, the, you know, the tube almost makes a character in London. Everyone yeah. has to take it. You have no choice the in London. The world knows about the London tube station. Exactly. So it, everyone knows it. It's, came, <laughs> it's, been, it's been all sorts of, all sorts of things. So for me, I was like, okay, that's, that's quite an interesting one to do. And I posted a video. It's called Running the Victoria Line. And is it, this right at the beginning? Yeah, this is early this year. This is early on this year. I was like, oh, I wonder that be... I was like, I want to do it anyway because it's an interesting route to do. I was already signed up to run... I think it was, it was like three weeks out from my previous ultra, mm. which was in America. It was a 80K sort of mountain race. And I had to do some long runs. I was like, okay, this is, seems to be interesting. It takes me through different areas of London as well, rather than running the same sort of routes. I just kind of posted, I was like, oh, let's you know, see what happens there. The video did really well. Yeah. Kind of blew up on that. And people were like, you should run this line. You should run this line. I looked at the other lines like, I wonder how long it would take me to run all of them. Right. And I kind of started putting it together. I was like, no, actually, how long would it take me to run all of them? If I did it like that, but I looked around, there's a handful of people who've done it before over different time frames, okay. and I just thought that's quite interesting. And at the time, you know, things are as they're moving forward. I was looking at what, what other races to do this year or what other challenges. To do. I was like, no, this one seems great. You know, it's in my hometown. It kind of makes sense. Has and anyone ever done it in eleven days before? One guy has done it eleven days. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So and also for me, it's not about trying to say like beat this person. This yeah. Out. It's never my goal or intention. These things. It's never around that because even someone's like, oh, you know, is there a record for this? Or can you apply to get records? It's like I don't care about yeah. any of that kind of stuff because that's definitely not why I'm in this for because for me it's you know it's about inspiring people and encouraging mm. people to do difficult things or things that they find challenging yeah which is really interesting and I think what the most interesting part for me is mm. is it's great that the fact you're not so fixated on the goal the goal's allowing you to do that training but the goal's allowing you to go on a journey and you're very hyper aware yeah that, that journey's the the important part that's the real value and it's kind of like if you i don't know if you've watched the latest netflix show with mr tyson fury himself i certainly have yes yeah yeah it's a great thing and he, like his mm. mental battles and stuff is always about he's feeling so much better once he's on that journey towards on the goal. journey yeah now, for, for me it's when you're saying oh i wanted to do this challenge was there a reason why you was like i want to do this and I want to start running was it was, was it because you, just, you wanted to have a goal or was it like no have... so this is really interesting running had never come naturally to me. Yeah. I only started running when I was like 27. I, run, I started running like four years ago. It was the first time I ever put on a pair of shoes and said, I'm going to go for a run. Yeah. I'd ran before playing sport. I used to play rugby. Running was the part of sport I hated. I was slow. I'm a big guy. Like yeah. I'm six, four. I'm 100. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're tall. <laughs> yeah, I'm tall. I'm, I'm 100 kilos now. I used to be a bit heavier when I played rugby. I was about 110 kilos. Yeah. So not exactly, you know, winning any uh, 5K or 10K yeah. races out here at all. You know, definitely not the build for a runner. And running was a thing that... I think through playing sports at schools, running was that punishment. Okay. I think I call it running anxiety. A lot of people get this because right. the only experience of running they've got is from at school. They were told to run as fast as they can, as hard as they can continuously, mm -hmm. which is not a pleasant experience to do. No matter who you are or how good you are at running, running at your full tilt all the time is not yeah. great. So things like cross country, I remember coming last in cross country. I, I was hated like, cross country at school. Exactly. And I, that's the idea I was like, oh, all running is, is you're taxing yourself and I'm not a runner. I yeah. sold myself this idea. I'm not a runner. And so... It was a case of I was uh, I was actually on a work trip. I was out in Canada at the time, just pre-COVID 2020. Yeah. And um, I was on this work trip, and it was I was on the worst time. Okay. It was awful. Like it was just really like it was a very confusing period of time. I was in a bit of a transitionary phase where I was not sure I enjoyed what I was doing. I wasn't sure I wanted to continue doing what I was doing. But I was out there, and I I was so jet lagged. I woke up like five in the morning, middle of winter. I just went out for I was like oh, fuck it, I'm going out for a run. So I kind of made a very conscious. I went on this run, and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Like looking back, I've actually got the. The, the route saved on Strava when I did it. I was looking at it a few, I always look go back to this because it's the, the first time I ever did a run. Yeah. I was like, someone, I was like, all right, I'm going for a run. I, I'll download Strava. It's the first thing I've posted on my Strava. And uh, I remember looking back at it and I, it was freezing cold, pouring rain, pretty much pitch black. It was January in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. It's not the nicest time of year, but nice part of the world to be in. Yeah. And um, the only thing I had was a pair of rugby shorts and like a t shirt. And I went out, <laughs> freezing cold. And my lungs burned. It was horrible. It was beautiful scenery. I remember getting to 10K and you know, like, you couldn't have paid me a million pounds to run any further. <laughs> and I get, I get to the end. I'm like, wow, that was, and it was, it's one of those things that I, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing with the guards and mm. pacing and that kind of stuff. I just, I just fancy going out for a run because I wanted to clear my head. Mm. And that was it. It was a case of, I'm not sure what I'm doing in life. I'm not sure where I'm at, but doing that kind of just made me feel a bit more comfortable. 
And the fact that it was a challenging thing, it wasn't easy. Like I said, running doesn't necessarily come yeah. easy to me. I was like, oh, I've just done this thing that was really challenging. And it took my mind off what I was dealing with. And okay, that's interesting. Next day, did the same thing again. A little bit less that time because uh, my legs were pretty sore. <laughs> but I went back out again and I did it. And I was like, oh. I was like, that was a bit of a pivotal like realization. Like, oh, okay, like this is something that I find difficult to do that mm. doesn't come naturally to me. And I don't necessarily want to do but that's why I want to do it. Yeah. Because it's something that is a, is a challenge. It's keeping my mind off the other things. And actually, when I finish, I notice like my mind is very clear. Okay. It's very easy for me then to go, oh, okay, let's look at this. Like, let's look at the problems I'm dealing with now. I've just done the hard thing, the thing that I think is harder than the problems I've got to deal with. Everything in comparison to that becomes a lot easier. I guess it's almost like that mental training of it, if you're training your brain every single, every single day to do things it doesn't necessarily want mm -hmm. to do. And that then goes into your life when you're, oh, I don't want to reply to that email. Yep. But you've already told your brain, I do things you I don't do want to do. So I'll just do it. It's literally just kind of trying to get control of your own thoughts. And the way I, the way I look at it as well is is the, the difference between before and after for me. Mm. Before, I let how I was feeling dictate my behaviors. Now my behaviors dictate how I'm feeling. Mm. It's a really powerful thing to look at because, again, it's how I feel about it. She doesn't even come into it. I wake up. I don't feel like running. That's fine. I'm going to do it anyway. And then afterwards, I feel like a you know competent i feel powerful for doing it yeah and my emotions after in so much better check whereas before you know i'd i'd seek pleasures in life and that was the only thing i'd be chasing i'd be chasing short-term pleasures yeah. i'd be chasing i'd be chasing this idea of i want to feel good now yeah and i don't have the patience or the discipline to do anything about it but what's the fastest pleasure i can see let's go out for a drink let's go out for a drink 100 percent. yeah absolutely that like that that's, that's what i do if I, if I felt down whatever it is okay go for a drink yeah i think so many people now this most people I speak to about this are always it's also the same thing they talk about how you know when they feel down they go out for a drink they take it too far mm. they then get caught in that trap where they feel like shit next you know next you know next weekend yeah. they're back at it again and again not demonizing going for a drink here. i think in times of celebration absolutely fine yeah. to you know, have a drink and, and whatnot but as a mechanism if not feeling good to go for have a drink isn't necessarily what I'd recommend yeah. in this sense here. Where and it's, it's not healthy. No, it? not not as slightest in there, in there at all. But with regards to how things change for me with regards to framing running and feeling yeah. good, it's doing that thing that I don't want to do that's hard mm. and getting control of just because I feel like I don't want to do this, my behavior is still going to dictate this. I am doing it, mm -hmm. whether I feel good or not. Afterwards, the feelings are in check. And it's almost like a daily reset because that's yeah. that's me the rest of the day. Like I woke up this morning really early, got my 10K done. I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel like going for a run this morning. As with pretty much every yeah. morning, it got done. Afterwards, I felt great. I felt competent. I felt powerful. I, I felt like I was winning the day for myself there. Yeah. I then managed to get a whole bunch of work sorted out and done. I managed to get back to emails that I've been putting <laughs> off because I've, I've been sort of traveling around a lot yeah. this, this week and I, there's so many things I had to get sorted. I had to get that sorted before traveling up here today. Mm. There were so many things I had to get done. And it just sets the tone for the day of I'm in charge of today. Yeah. These are going to get done. And, you know, I've had a, a fully, a full successful morning, traveled up here to Manchester. Yeah. I'm now doing this with you guys. It, I'm in control of it. Hey, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for listening and give one of you loyal listeners a chance to win a year long supply of Furosity to show appreciation for all your support. To enter, all you need to do is subscribe to our podcast on your favorite streaming platform and share your favorite episode on social media. But don't forget to tag us so we can see it. We really do appreciate you and thank you for listening. It sounds like almost like the drug for emotions. You know what it is? It's the opposite of drugs is the best way to explain yeah. it. I heard this, I heard someone too recently talk about this, so I won't tell you this to my own credit, but drugs make you feel good in the moment and terrible afterwards. Yeah. Running makes you feel terrible in the moment and incredible afterwards. I think it taps into that same part of the brain. Mm. It's the, just the opposite of it. Yeah. Um, and it's an incredible way to look at it because again, it, it your delayed gratification, delayed satisfaction, delayed joy. But, and again, you're putting yourself into pain. You're putting yourself into the hurt locker. And that, whether it's a 5K, whether it's a 10K, mm. whether it's an ultra marathon, whether that's a multi-day ultra marathon, whatever that is, it's delaying that reward, delaying that onset. But it's the feeling of competency you get. And I think, most people just want to feel useful and competent about what they're doing here. Yeah. And with running, it's such an, especially when you come from a position where not being good at it to getting better at it and seeing that progress and then being able to go out and again and again, do these things. Like four years ago, the idea of me running a marathon was beyond me. <laughs> and it's like, you know, in the last year, I've done multiple ultra marathons that are double, yeah. triple the distance of, of what these are. And it's like, hang on a minute, like I feel pretty fucking confident after doing these things. I feel pretty good about myself. The fact that I've gone, hang on a minute. That's something I never thought I could do. Yeah. I'm now doing it with ease, with a smile on my face. 
Yeah. It's pretty good to be here. How, how, so tell me through that mindset, like you struggled the first run you did, you managed yep. to, and you, you do, you have been in physical sport. You said you played rugby and stuff. Played You've rugby. In... I've always, I've always gone to the gym because yeah. I enjoy the gym, but for gym for me is never one of those difficult things. I like going to the gym because that's what me and my yeah. friends used to do when I was like 16 onwards, lift weights at the gym. Yeah. You know, it was, it was a nice thing to do. I always, I'll never not lift weights. I think it's yeah. fun to do, but I never find it particularly difficult. Yeah. I know some people do find that difficult. Yeah. And again, it's a different thing. Just being around that environment with friends, it's always been a fun yeah. thing to do. You know, I've never not, if I've, if, no matter how bad I feel, I always go to the gym, lift some weights, but running's the yeah. hard part. What I mean is that's, that's, the, that's the thing. You did, you did that 10K, all right? Yeah. Somebody else's might be struggling to do that 1K. It could be a exactly. 5K, but wherever that benchmark is for that person, including yourself, which was yeah. 10, and it was really hard. And like you said, you can be paid a million pounds to further. go further. That's and done. now you're doing like a marathon with ease, almost, not with ease, yeah. but like it's still that mental battle, but it's a lot more achievable. It's a lot more, 100%. It's the wall, right? It's classes that classes the wall, like the runner's wall. Exactly. So you hit the wall at 10K and then you may have hit it at 8K the next day and then 12K. Yeah. What was your mindset in terms of going, no, I want to keep breaking through that? Was there something in your brain that was like, this is what I do to get through it? What was the hack? I think you got to tap into anything. I mean, all, a lot of people talk about, you know, you got to do things for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to think positive these things there. It's not true. Use anything as motivation. Use anything. All emotion is motivation. That's free energy, right? Mm -hmm. So you feel good about things, doing things for the right reasons, prove them to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to do it to prove someone wrong? Fucking use it. Like <laughs> there's there's no rules on this. I mean, again, I, I get the only time I get stick on social media about things is I'll often talk about like you know you want to do something to prove someone wrong. Absolutely, go ahead and do it. It's free energy. You're dealing with a loss. You're dealing with grief. You're dealing with heartbreak. What these things are, it's free fucking fuel. Yeah. Right. It's free fuel. Whatever you're feeling, channel it into it. Um, so for me, it was like, okay, how can we, you know, what's, what's a good way to express these things? And the amount of emotions you end up going through doing these challenges. Like my last race was a, a race in America. It was a 50 mile, so 80K trail race okay. in upstate New York. And it didn't go to plan in a sense. I hit the halfway point and I had a massive foot problem. Wrong shoe choice. Things weren't going well. And I was like, I've got basically another marathon to do. And it's like two climbs as well. I'm, being, I'm six hours in at this point as well. I'm like, yeah. I am <laughs> fucked it. And I was like, no, no, no. What we're going to do is going to get myself two minutes to sort myself out of an aid station. It's like, you're going to take some fuel on. I could just about walk on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are we going to do? You're going to head the headphones on. We're going to go to a little dark place here. We're going to put a little playlist on to get through. I thought, let's give it let's give it another hour and just scrape together whatever pace you can find here. And let's just let's just get through this here. You know, we'll maybe we'll, we'll walk the uphills and we'll just, on the flats, we'll get moving. Downhills, we'll start moving again. But the next thing you know, <laughs> the other foot starts going as well. I was like, oh, God, I'm in trouble here. Yeah. Four hours went by and I was in the pain cave. Like I, everyone I tried to speak to me, I was like, just, just not having this. Like, mm -hmm. There was quite a few of us who in our group who were doing it. I was just, I left, took myself aside and said, I was going to do be on my own here. And got to another four hours down the road. And uh, I just said to myself, I had that little conversation with myself. Hey, what, what are you feeling at the moment? What's going on in your life? What are you scared about? What are you worried about? There's nothing to distract me. My, my, my front part of the brain is so tired at this point. I was like, yo, let's have this conversation. Yeah. You know, he's going to tap into things like, you know, why do I feel that I can't accept love? How often do you have that conversation, right? No. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, this is a minute here. You know, I, yeah, I had a, my cousin passed away the back end of last year. It's like, you know, how do we feel about someone so young passing away? What does that mean for your life? Does that change anything? All these things are at no point. Yeah. Have I ever gone, you know, let's talk about this or talk about that, whatever it is. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And I just, for about half an hour, went through okay why do you feel this what it is what's happened in your life that you feel that this is what we're going to do about it okay great yeah what are the actions there when had a little conversation next thing you know pain in my feet disappeared i start finding my pace again i start running as if i've just you know had a week off and feeling great and woke up in the morning had a cup of coffee i'm like anyway i've been running for 10 hours straight here climbed three peaks yeah and the agony that was my feet has disappeared because i've just got through this mental difficulty in my mind like how how and maybe you know we yeah, well, my, the only way i can think about it is maybe the physical pain we feel often is linked to that emotional pain and bags we carry yeah and actually when we start letting certain things go or dealing with certain things things become a lot easier yeah the rest of the weight of life becomes a lot easier i'm not saying that's going to solve anything but jesus christ i was like hang on this is i'm, th I'm feeling fit I can i'm feeling again. good here I catch up with my friends who are doing this. And bear in mind, every time they come to speak to me the last four hours, yeah. I've literally told them to leave me alone. I'm like, I, I'm in the hole at the minute. I can't, I don't want to communicate. I just want to do this. I just want to work through it. I'm there 
singing along, dancing. Like, I'm having a good time. I'm then starting to push the pace with everyone. And it comes yeah. to the last like 5K and I'm starting to really throw some numbers down. I'm like, hang a minute. And I start pulling out some normal, like normal running pace if I was yeah. riding. We're still on trails and I'm 75K down. I'm thinking, how the fuck is this possible? So when I talk about the emotions is this untapped energy pool we've got, mm. do I believe it? Because that is just f free fuel right there and yeah. there. And I finished, the finish, we finished in just under 12 hours. And I was like, I feel fucking fine. I feel great. Oh, and I was still flying on that energy. Did it hurt the next day? No, I felt good. I, yeah. ran, I ran the next day. I went for a little, little recovery <laughs> run. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? And I, I couldn't explain to you just how painful that was mm. as a physical thing. It, was, it wasn't like, I was, I was cause I, even at the time, checking myself, like the backs of my heels hurt. My Achilles were sore. Mm. I was like, this is, I was like, something's up here. And I was in so much pain. It was hurting. Every step hurt. Yeah. Every step fucking hurt. But four hours go by you kept kept yeah. on moving and then you realize okay maybe your body exaggerates these issues yeah. that maybe there was something in there that was holding me back or maybe there's something that that emotional pain yeah you were holding on to some that weight and that's what that physical pain yeah. really was maybe it was just a little bit of physical mm -hmm. pain but you amplify in your mind because you looked at it through this lens of negativity or this lens of, or this emotion that you've given yeah. control to i'm sorry to pause the listening but there's a product i need to tell you about and it's our sugar-free caffeinated energy gum it allows you to hit your day harder and give you a lift in moments where you need it most. Now, back to the show. And jumping into that, because this whole podcast, mm -hmm. like, we want it to be raw, honest, sure. and for some people to be able to connect. Those moments you was going through, you touched on it slightly when you was at that work in that place. Yeah. Has there ever been any other moments where you did start getting those lows or at home and that, like you just said, like mm. you went through a horrible thing with your cousin. You got yeah, my past with my cousin last year was something that, and again, I'm quite good at putting on a bit of a brave face. Yeah. And I'll admit that because it's something that I'll always mm. do. And it's always like a fallback for me. I'll talk about it here and there and I'll, you know, think, you know, I'm working through this. And then when something happens again, it's a, my natural instinct is to, everything's all right. I can manage it. I can deal with it. That's fine. Mm. And I remember when, when it happened, very, very sad, you know, left behind two kids, his, uh, his partner as well. And it was really, really sad, the family. And I, I remember the time, like, I didn't necessarily give it at the time because it's the first time I lost a cousin you know yeah. someone my sort of nearest to my own age how, how old were they he was in his 40s so he's a little bit older than me but he yeah. was my oldest oldest cousin and he was a you know really great bloke and I just didn't really at the time it was again a case of recognizing what's happened but it was it was such a new emotion and my my auto response is usually okay we're going to put that back there and that's kind of any every time anything tragic's happened in my life or anything that's difficult happened in my life my first response isn't always like, oh, fuck. It's always like, okay, this has happened. You're like, you know what? You can deal with it. You can deal with it. But the problem with that is by pretending those emotions don't exist as a yeah. dealing coping mechanism doesn't solve the problem or doesn't, it's not a way of dealing with it. You have to mourn things. You have to understand things. You have to process things in that time. If you don't deal with it, then it will come back at some point. And that's mm. the biggest thing I've learned is every time something pretty terrible has happened to me and there's been a few things and again as we as yeah. we as we grow as humans we start to work through those things and understand why are we the way we are am i i'm you know i'm starting to understand that you know running ultra marathons isn't the most normal thing to be doing and maybe where does that come from yeah. actually trying to work through why i'm drawn to these things why am i drawn to going into these emotional pits to try and pull out something that's in there yeah. and it's again it links back to things that happen to, to across your life you know and so for me it's uh yeah it, it's, it's you know passing my cousin's a big one um Biggest one when I was, I actually fell out really bad with my my mum when I was fifteen years old. Okay. Was what really really big for me at the time. I was like, yeah, it's what it is. Cool. I end up living with my dad. He lived like a bit further away. He had to commute to school at fifteen. And at the time, I was like, yes, yeah, this, this is. I was like, this yeah. is awesome. I was like, don't have to deal with that anymore. Independency. Independent. Because my mum was like, she's reasonably strict woman. There, she was a teacher herself, which okay. meant that she helped me a lot my school work and that. And like. I was pretty well protected in yeah. that in that lifestyle. And then all of a sudden, fifteen before exams, it's like oh, okay, like big fallout. Yeah. Don't live there anymore. It's like what what happened? A, a multitude of things. It was just okay. you know, my mum, my parents divorced. I was very young. I spent. I lived with my mum, so my dad on weekends. And again, it's not it's not even like a blame right in my parents mm. because my parents did the best job they could at the time. But you grow up, you start to realizing your parents are just people who are trying their best most yeah. of the time. We're, like I'm, I'm, my mum had me when. I was younger than I am now. And I'm thinking, most 30-year-olds I know are fucking irresponsible still. And they're just kind of doing their best they can mm. do there. So it's definitely not like a criticism or blaming at them at all because they were just trying to do their best they could. And, you know, they sacrificed so much and gave so much. But at the same time, you know, I thought, you know, most people think of their parents, their mums, someone that's always going to be there no matter what. 
And actually like the feeling and understanding that I had, or maybe that I'd taught myself was, you know, oh, you're not necessarily deserving of someone's love or affection. Or you distrust when it comes there because before it's been taken away from you. Yeah. That was a real hard thing to start to come to terms with. It didn't, it took me until I was like mid towards the late twenties to really understand that because, you know, I just generally had distrust in my partner, even though there's mm. no reason to distrust them at all. It was more a case of, I just thought, you know, well, they could say this, but they say I love you and whatnot, but yeah. I know that doesn't mean anything because you could just disappear at one point. All of a sudden the road could just be pulled under. Exactly that. So then it's realizing, okay, that's that's a me problem, not my partner's yeah. problem. That's a case of I've got things to work on there. Every time I get caught on these long runs of these ultras and that, I start to go into those things. Okay, what are the ways I can improve this idea? What are the ways I can improve this attitude I have towards myself yeah. or towards people who give me or show me any love or affection? Why do I feel that I don't deserve these things? What is it about me? You know, and it's like when you really get into those things. And for me, like I try to speak to people about like, I try to go to therapy. <laughs> I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, just someone I don't really know having a conversation like that and asking real deep questions. I'm like, go fuck yourself. I don't yeah. tell you this. It took a while. And I found that actually a combination of going to speak to people about that and finding the person that I actually kind of like to speak to about that. And then doing this on runs, like speaking to myself about it. And again, it's not saying that I'm trying to self, self fix myself yeah. here. But generally through life, I've always found that I've got myself out of my own situations. I've got myself out of my own predicaments. And this is just a way that I can self-serve myself by doing this the daily yeah. thing of going for that run, keep a check on where we're at, you know, move move the needle towards where we need it to be and just continue to work on ourselves there. And again, I'm not saying that the run is going to solve anyone's problems here by yeah. any means. I'm just saying it had a massive impact on me and a massive positive impact on my own mental health and my own disciplines by doing this thing daily that I hated. It sounds like to summarize what you've just said, it's like do the small things you don't want to do. Hundred percent. I think that's hundred percent. That's that, listening from everything you've said. It, you, that that journey has been so big, but if you were to try and take that step up the the mountain in one one step, you couldn't take mm -hmm. it. But what you did was started here, and every single little step grows and grows. And it was all from doing things that your brain said, "Oh, don't do that." <laughs> hundred percent. You got to remember, our brains we're tricky. Like we're not our mm. thoughts and our brains. Yeah, and that's really important to remember. You know, they, they, that's just a part of us. We're not the thoughts of our brain. So when things say, don't do this, don't do that, just remember, like, we're very complex beings. Yeah. We may say things one one day to us and may say other things the other day to us. We have a tendency to kind of deceive ourselves all yeah. the time. So if, we, if we're in a concept about deceiving yourselves, just rewrite the narrative a little yeah. bit. Just change it up a little bit. You know, when your brain says you probably shouldn't do that and talk about going for a run, maybe it's pissing with rain, maybe it's yeah. cold, we'll stay indoors. Tell us shut the it. fuck up. Just go and do it. Just go and do it. It's fine. What's the worst going to happen? You get a bit wet. Okay, great. I love that. So in terms of close, bringing us to a close, go is, is go and do it. <laughs> Don't fucking do it. Whatever it go is, man. It. Life's, this again, there's one of those things, you know, life is far shorter than we ever think mm. it is. And life will pass us by fast. And you go remember, you'll never be this age again. You'll never be in this position in life again. You've got to make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. You've got to make sure as well that, you know, you've got something to work towards. And if you're not enjoying where things are in life at the moment, that's okay. Yeah. A lot of us don't but it's your responsibility to deal with that. It may not be your fault for the reason, the place you're in. Most of the time, it's never our fault, the reasons we're in, the situations we're in. But it is our responsibility to deal with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying running will fix those problems. I'm just saying- <laughs> You found help in it. I found, I found a discipline that helped me recognize other issues in my life. And I think it's a great thing to do. It may not be for everyone. Mm. But then again, I didn't think running was for me either. Yeah. But it is. I mean- I can't think of a better sentence to, to bring that to a close. But before we do, I know you've got a lot of calories to get in every single day. Yes. And we have two bars here, which are called Power Protein. Talk to me. They are chocolate fudge brownie. They are caramel mm. flavored. Ooh. 20 grams of protein, 1.9 grams of sugar. Perfect. Should we do a taste test? Absolutely. Oh, let's go for it. Go for it in there. You like this one up all, all, yeah. uh, all the interview. There you go. There you go. So, Perfect. It gives you your brutal, honest brutal thoughts honest. here. Yeah. Grab this one here. Go for right. it. Okay. Oh, he's ripping it open. ASMR. Yeah, that's good. Yeah? That's good. What are we, what are we feeling? We'll take the lot. We'll, take, yeah, <laughs> mate, we'll give you a box. We'll give you an absolute box. <laughs> but I brought a bag with me up today, so I'll <laughs> put it up. Yeah. That's a very easy eat, that. That's a very that's easy nice. eat. A lot of time... Protein bars are very mouthy. Sorry for chewing down the microphone, everyone. <laughs> Just listen to this at home. But if you're into ASMR, <laughs> you'll enjoy this. So, we've got a little game just around the corner. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. Already. I saw it when we came in. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we go and have a little play? I think so. The boom's there. Yeah, let's go for it, mate. Right. So, 
just around here is the pack of punch. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, it was at an event very recently. Tommy Fury sitting at the top. Of course he is. Yeah. Of course he is. But, because it is power of the ordinary. Yeah. We've talked a lot about goals. Okay. This punch, I want you to nominate it towards a goal. Okay. So, what's the goal going to be? Oh. Inspire as many people to lead more positive lives as is next year through okay. social media. Brilliant. That's the goal there. That's the goal. Right, well, I'll ask you to hold this for me though, my ring. Oh, yeah. Just in go. case. I don't want to break my hand just before this uh, running the tube yeah. in there. <laughs> right. Do I get one go at this, is right? One go. one go. Are you ready? Right. My fighting days are well behind me here, but you know, we've still got something in the tank, I think. I think the height's going to help you. You reckon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hang on. Go into this. Just, just going to line this up here. We have to little run up into you it as well. Can do whatever you want. Every, no, everyone's technique's different. I can run into it. That's fine. Because I'm all right at that these <laughs> okay. days. Right. Okay. You ready? Okay. Ooh. That was a big hit. See, so we're going here. I think that might be the loudest hit we've had. Yeah. It is. <gasps> you good? Woo! Keep going. Nine three six. We'll take it. We'll take that. Nine three six. You are catching Tommy. We'll go in there. We can give you a second go. Yeah. But what we'll do, we'll grab your can. Perfect. Oh, we'll, here we go. We'll, good thinking. Yeah, we'll fuel you up with the little. So wait, that was my warm-up go then. That was a warm-up go. What yeah. was it? Nine. Nine three, nine, three six. six. Okay, I'll take wow. that. Okay, I'll get your score ready. Do you reckon you can beat nine three six? Yeah, I reckon I'll beat that. That is. Get that guy. That's big. That's close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Perfect. Are right, you ready? Then. I'm dead. Okay, that's you. Let's warm up done. Okay. Look, it's flashing. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. Okay. <laughs> See how this one goes. Keep going, tick, 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 tick. Oh, not, not quite. quite. Not quite, not quite. We'll take 936, nine, that's three, all right. 936, 936, go we'll on. We'll take it. Right, you're 936, perfect. There you go. Right. We get to move down bad boy Chuck. Yeah, you get to move them down. Right. You beat them. Perfect. Close to Tommy Fury, but not quite enough. That's fine, he's a professional boxer. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I think it'd be, let's see. Nine. Oh, that was there, wasn't it? There you go. There you go. Johnny, and, and just put it across the tops. <laughs> it's like on a birthday card when you start writing too close to the yeah, edge, you gotta cram it in there. And time was nine, three, six. Three, six. That's one half. Ooh. Oh, hang on, no, 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 no. <laughs> there you go. That was me. Take being it there. With numbers. Perfect. Right. Well, thank you so much. You almost went over then. Almost went you? over then. Thank you very much awesome. for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank um, you so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, do you want to sign us off? I don't think I've done so often. <laughs> Mine went absolutely blank on that one. I was expecting that one going in there. Well, we'll leave that as it is. Well, yeah, Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching this podcast. And if you're enjoying these episodes, let us know by subscribing to whichever channel you're listening through. It makes a huge difference, which allows us to grow and bring you better content.